the whole Tommy knocker thing is a real thing. Absolutely a real thing because when we've remote viewed some mines in general, we will often run across these types of things. Some of these trolls or some of these beings were known to eat humans. On this planet, well, there are beings that are sort of the administrator of zones, an area where there is a portal. And these beings exist within another dimension. A lot of people, when they think of fairies, they're like, oh, Tinkerbell or something. But that's not what Fae means. Fae refers to a whole broad category of beings that are in this dimensional space that, that John is kind of referring to. And as we've progressed through time and got more materialistic and decided to close down the blinders around our eyes and senses, we lost, begin to lose the ability to perceive these things. John, have you heard of these things? Because there's not just Tommy knockers that people have reported in these caves. Have you heard of these things called blue caps? Cave creatures are said to inhabit the mines, tunnels, and crevices that lie beneath the earth. And you might just agree after you hear what we found. Ever heard of the Tommy knocker, the trickster who warns of impending cave-ins? How about the blue cap, a spirit in the form of a blue flame known for assisting miners via miraculous powers? What's really going on in places like Cripple Creek in Colorado or the Board Camp Crystal Mine in Arkansas? Today, we got John Vivanco's remote viewing data of a real-life sorcery and interdimensional portals. Then, my investigative research into the history of creature sightings and mining superstitions plus online footage of levitating stones. You're going to think this foray into the stories of cave creatures is seriously fascinating. So join John and me, Rob Counts, for a metaphysical show that's out of this world. Are you listening to the Metaphysical Podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or elsewhere? Leave us a five-star rating and review to help us reach even more people. And remember, remember this, you got to like, follow, and subscribe on YouTube, Rumble, Ganjing World, Twitter, Facebook, and wherever the heck you are. John, how you doing? Good. How's it going? Good. I'm uh, yeah. fairly excited about uh, today's episode and content. Uh, yeah, for those of you at home, John and I have been going back and forth for the last couple of weeks about inner earth sort of inner earth beings but all revolved around caves and strange occurrences that have i guess haunted humankind for a lot longer than we're aware of and we're going to be getting into a lot of that stuff today pretty exciting stuff yeah it's like it's like um things poking their head into our dimensional reality but yet think of like caves and underground as part of the unknown or the underworld. And it's yeah, well, like, what's it's like there? the subconscious of the earth almost, you know, that's a weird yeah. way to look at it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like, it's like our own subconscious microcosm macrocosm of the earth. And it's part of this. I wouldn't call it the underworld. People like to call it the underworld. The underworld has dark connotations to it, but it's not necessarily like that. It's just like the unknown and that's the subconscious. So it's like this conscious part of the earth to us at least. Yeah, it is. And, and, and I think like, as I guess immaterial as that sounds, it manifests in very material ways that right. we're going to be getting into in this, right. and in, you know, in this episode, and it's not just things like hauntings, which we will certainly talk about. We're talking about like physical beings and cases that no one can explain. Exactly. Very, it's just exciting stuff that makes you, rethink not only the history of the earth, but what's really going on out there right now. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, people have these ideas about the inner earth kingdom as this sort of like, well, there's like a capital and it's a central with a large sun in the middle. But a lot of we stuff that we've seen has been so isolated and like you have these sort of inner earth civilizations with different varying beings within their own like little country-ish sort of thing or their own little cave system kind of thing, yeah. as opposed to this overarching, you go in and there's the sun and like there's this whole other civilization. I haven't really seen anything like that. Now I don't, don't just because we haven't seen it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It's just like most of what we've seen is like these little things that poke their head up. It's like paranormal stuff, you know, 
like when you research paranormal, they, they poke their head up and you follow the trail down and you go into their little realm. Then another one comes up and you follow that down and you go into their little realm. Yeah. And, and, you know, you and I haven't even delved into the little people of the earth yet, and we won't really hear, but that's a, an entirely enormous, fascinating subject that we're seeing evidence of all across the world. Like Canadians have their stories. You've got, of course, the Irish have their stories of these things. Icelandic see these things reportedly all the time, you know, and they're all hiding underground. It's like right. this, what is underground? You know, it's so we're 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 always looking out into space and and our our wildest dreams are 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 out there with the stars but really what's going on on our own planet in the interior oh it's just so interesting you know yeah. well that's the whole thing like you know the humankind it's as far as this material version that we're in right now it has been so adamant that nothing exists outside of what we've already discovered until we discover something new but well, until and, then, it doesn't even exist. And you'll be ridiculed for talking about it. Yeah. And, and to be fair, there's so much evidence out there right now. And you have guys that are doing the hard work, like Graham Hancock, trying to raise these flags of these ancient advanced civilizations that are not explainable. And we still have everybody denying all of this stuff today. But I'm telling you, if you're listening at home or watching this at home, after these these series of episodes that we're doing, you are going to be in the state that we're in right now, which is rethinking everything that's going on on the planet. There was a show in around 2013 that you reminded me of because I'd forgotten. I used to watch the show and it's called Ghost Mine. Uh, I can't remember which production company put it out. Was it was it travel or I think it was originally on sci fi. That was the time when everybody was getting into the game of ghost hunting shows. It was like just a big party what was really cool about this show for those of you at home is the this took place in in an old mine in oregon that had been bought by a gentleman this mine had been abandoned because there was too much too much activity at the mine that caused the miners to flee basically right and that was like that was like 80 years ago from what 2013 right Yes, leaving potentially about $35 million worth of gold still in the mine. And so somebody bought it and then tried to hire a solid team of miners to go in and find the gold so that everybody could make out and make a lot of money from, from this gold. Like in small quantities, is worth a lot of money. Makes sense. Um, and they, you know, they hired... What was interesting is there's a whole story of finding the gold in the mine going on, but... The owner also hired two paranormal investigators to be there to track everything and to try to alleviate the fears of the miners as the mining. Alleviate the yeah. fears. I mean, you know, when I watched that show, it was like it didn't alleviate any fears on their <laughs> part. In fact, it ramped it up because you're putting such a focus on it. It's good television. I love um, how production goes, moves. Oh, me too. It was like, God. Now, the, the only thing that I had a problem with now, I can't remember the particular town in Oregon that this was Sumter. in. Sumter. Sumter. That's right. Yeah. Sumter. This town has a, just a very long history of different things going on in the town. Never mind the mine, which it was known for, you know, this gold mine. But, you know, the, the there's a lot of Masonic activity in the town. It had a hospital in it at one point. There was a brothel in there at one point. Like, there was so much activity paranormal activity in the town itself never mind the mine which even in the first episode we're getting what seems like paranormal activity revolved around these things called tommy knockers which we're going to be getting into yeah the old tommy knocker <laughs> right and I what i thought you know it always when i'm watching these shows too I, I think I know a little bit too much about how these productions go just from having friends that work in this industry. Sometimes the things that happen on these shows are red flags to me in terms of stuff that they're planting as opposed to stuff that is actually happening. Um, and I can kind of give you a little example. Like one of the miners are very superstitious. A lot of the superstitions from mining in the United States comes over from the UK where I think the greatest mining, the greatest miners over in the UK were from Cornwall, I think it was. 
And a lot of them came over to the U.S. and spread a lot of their lore, but they also educated everyone on how to find gold, how to how to actually use the mind to find gold. And a lot of that revolved around listening to what appears to be paranormal entities, giving you hints of where this stuff is, where to go, where not to go, when to get out of the mine, when there's going to be a cave in. And one of the one of the legends or one of the the superstitions, I guess you could say, is women are not safe in a mine. This is not me saying this. This is what they say. Particularly redheaded women should not be in mines, which is bizarre. That's like a bizarre superstition. It's very specific. It's very specific. Why yeah. a redheaded woman, right? Right. Well, that, that, they may, that may come out of Ireland and Cornwall to begin with, right? Or I assume. Very well could, right? Yeah. I assume. But the miners at this facility in 2013 are very aware of this because it, this is one of those things where I'm like, did they do this on purpose? You know, they, they, one of the paranormal investigators is a woman and she's redheaded. And right <laughs> yeah. away, one of the miners is like, she's a redhead, right. <laughs> you know, probably literally had that in their notes that they had to cast a redheaded woman for the paranormal team just because they knew that. And, you know, literally this shows about, it's about drumming up drama and so you've got this another other layer of drama between the miners and the paranormal investigator who's a redheaded woman who they know is just going to draw out all sorts of ire from these guys, right? They just know it. They want that drama. Exactly. <laughs> what was her name? Her name was Kristen Lumen, I think. Kristen Lumen, paranormal investigator. She's been at it for a while. I think she's actually working on a new program right now. I'm not sure if it's with Patrick Doyle, the other paranormal investigator. But, you know, they were using a lot of advanced technology, even for the time, to track a lot of the paranormal stuff going on. And one of the things that happens in the first episode of this series is there's two miners that are in there you know, surveying for gold. Uh, one of the guys is being trained and one of the guys is highly experienced. And he hears after they're chiseling away to take some samples they hear some knocks and the more experienced miner says, we need to get out of here right now. And they run out of the cave as fast as they can. I mean, you know, you're in a mine, you're trying not to bump your head and stuff, but they get out of the cave as fast as they can. And then indeed there is a cave in almost right away. <laughs> what did you think of that when you saw that John? You know, was that production or were these the Tommy knockers alerting them to a cave in? So, I don't believe that this is production. I don't think, I didn't think that was production on that, on that run. I didn't think it was at all. That was, so probably what happened was this was the initial uh, feel out pilot episode that just got, you know, put into the main series. And because they had such an interesting event occur on that, it launched it for like what, two they seasons. They were like, let's yeah. keep this going. Let's keep this going. Um, I do know that that these crews will make stuff, make stuff up. But the fact that there was the cave in and my gut just tells me, yeah, there was something going on there, especially in this mine, because it's been known to be haunted for a very, very long time. And it was abandoned 80 years ago or so because of this. Um, and I do know that the whole Tommy knocker thing is a real thing absolutely a real thing because when we've remote viewed some mines in general, we will often run across these types of things uh, that will be there and they will be in a, they'll, they'll be protecting literally like they'll be protecting the mine. Now I don't know about nice Tommy knockers, but the ones we've experienced have been trying to keep us away from it. So I can imagine that, whatever's there or whatever warned them was something that was, you know, looking out for them. But most of the time in my experience, they seem to be more negative. They're trying to protect something. What they think yeah, is theirs. Yeah. It does appear to be that way. And there are, well, there are loads of different experiences that people have had. Some are, almost more mischievous and nefarious and some are more their lives like people's lives are being saved by the amount of knocks that people people are hearing like they've translated the amount of knocks i think it was like two means gold here 
and three means get out of the cave right now. There's going to be a cave in. Right. Or something like this. Right. And, and these Tommy knockers were described in the past as almost like these little dwarvish men, like one and a half feet to, to three feet tall wearing mining gear. And these miners would actually leave food out for them. They would respect their space a lot. And if they didn't do that, they felt as if the mine would react in a negative way towards them. Some of them would even go to bars and leave a seat for the Tommy knockers at the bar with them while they were drinking after, you know, a hard day work in the mine. It's like ships, you know, because you're under immense danger, you're going into an environment where something really bad can potentially happen. You're going to have all these superstitions. Don't, don't put a hat on the bed, you know, stuff like that. There's going to be that no matter what. But a lot of these things are based on reality, right? But the thing is, is that, well, at least with the ships, human consciousness, one of the things we've seen, the human consciousness, when it starts to see a pattern in something, will create that pattern into the future, right? It's not going to be just, this is how it is. It's, a, it's human notices, more people notice, and it creates the pattern in order to follow. It becomes this sort of like tea leaf thing that actually works. It's like reading tea leaves, right? So, oh yeah, you notice this pattern. When you begin to notice the pattern, you notice it over and over again, that, that the universe consciousness begins to shape the pattern into this recognizable form in order to take specific actions. That's really interesting the way you put that. So do you think that this is like humans belief system actually paving this and not always inroads? not always i think okay. a lot of that happens with ships and mm. the thing with mines though is that there are tommy knockers there are tommy are, knockers. are these little are these little green men are these what are these things like are they or are they just spirits that live in there are we talking about some entities that are actually physically in the mines that are actually knocking on those on those uh, walls, those mine walls to, to give them hints. Yeah. So it's like if people astral travel, if, if there's a lot of people out there who do this as a practice, astral travel, you'll notice that we exist. And this is physics also follows this as well, like more uh, esoteric physics that we live in a multidimensional world. And and from what I've seen, we've, we, we are layer upon layer upon layer of multi, multiple dimensions around us right now. There are beings all around me right now in other dimensions. Some of these beings can see me, can interact with me. Most people, they have this, their, their, their physical construction is to keep them constrained within the strict physical reality of 3D. Right. But when you begin to broaden your mind, you begin to sense these other realities that are all sandwiched here. And when you get to the whole Tommy knocker phenomena, that's what you're running into. But you're running into something that is existing that can straddle both ours and theirs that can come in and out that can even change form. So. I'm guessing that, you know, a lot of these guys, when they do see the dwarf with the miner's helmet and the bucket and the shovel, that's a rendition of it because it can shape shift in a sense. But it's true face is something a little bit different than that. As far as I've seen, it looks a little bit different. It still has the big nose, mm. but it's a little bit more hairy. It's not dressed up and it is, it's small. It's very short. And it's dwarvish looking, but it's more like a uh, trickster. It has a very trickster vibe mm. to it. So, like leprechauns or something in like the mind. When something has a trickster vibe to it, it can go one way or the other as far as helping goes. The moment that you notice something's got a tr trickster vibe, you cannot necessarily trust it, even though it's giving you good information. It can easily turn around and give you that bad information just for its own entertainment or getting something that it wants. Or they're setting you up to laugh at you eventually or something. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm, very interesting. Well, John, have you heard of these things? Cause there's not just Tommy knockers that people have reported in these caves. Have you heard of these things called blue caps? <laughs> no, I've never, never heard of that. It sounds like a mushroom. 
I know. Well, you know what's weird is like you can almost imagine Tommy knockers or something with these little blue caps on, right? But blue caps actually refer to a strange farrier ghost in English folklore that sort of inhabits the mines. Like they appear as small blue flame and they lead respectful miners to rich deposits of minerals. And then they forewarn miners as well of cave So this sounds very similar to the Tommyknockers. And they demand payment for their work and only accept no more or no less than they're owed. Huh. And so now what's weird, though, is that there are claims that this flame or this entity could transport full tubs of coal, which aren't, aren't light. So that means so it's it's dematerializing and then materializing or people see coal floating down the mine. Yeah, it's like you want to believe that these miners are crazy people that are imagining this. But I mean, could that po be possible in every case? You know, I mean, there's a lot of paranormal activity that happens down there and they manifest the paranormal activity manifests differently. Right. Yeah, right. But I mean, so, OK, so when we get to some of this later stuff that we're going to talk about, you'll begin to understand, well, maybe that this can happen, that there's an energy, especially when it comes to quartz, that other things can use. And and so I can absolutely, even though I've never heard of these things, like this, this is, lines up with other data that I have on other locations where things have moved so you will get to that a little bit later but 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 no it's really fascinating i had never heard of these things yeah i'm gonna have to look into it because you know they sound like they sound like the tommy knockers on a good day <laughs> yeah right right there's other superstitions too in the mines that that some of these miners uh <clears throat> have you know like it's and this corresponds to stuff that we're hearing in forests and woods as well. And you and I have talked about this, but it's very unlucky to whistle inside of mines. Just don't ever take up whistling in general. I just like don't whistle in general, man. I can't even tell you how many times I've told people to stop whistling because it just attracts stuff. Yeah, I am totally going to be with you in the woods someday and just start whistling and see what <laughs> you do. Don't do it, man. The cameras will be on and you're going to slap me in the back of the head. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm kidding. I won't do that. I'm going to probably be like really on the lookout when we're we're in a place like that. And then there's um there's other like bizarre superstitions I'll just get into really quick. Um if a miner's lamp didn't burn bright enough underground, his wife was cheating with another man he was she was out cheating with another man probably at that time oh man yeah. way to cause stress like even more stress in the mind the last thing you right. need imagine going home and just being like honey my lamp didn't burn that bright today what were you doing who were you with yeah who were you with um oh. okay so this is another interesting one actually quite freaky if a miner's clothes slipped off the hook in the changing room, it meant that he was going to fall into a hole, like slip hook, slip into a hole. Hmm. Like it was a, it was like a heads up to, to, to watch out for this guy that day. Right. right. That's interesting. Yeah. You know what? The, the, these guys seem to have more, um, more of this type of stuff to look out for more, more of this than ship than people going on ships it just this is way like, more it's so loaded yeah way more and and man i found once i started looking into tommy knockers it just started opening up because i found that like over there is a welsh version of the tommy knockers it's the same lore the same superstitions and they're called the coblin coblin now i think hmm. i excuse me if i mispronounce that if you're welsh because i know you guys have a particular way of uh pronouncing things but uh, and then, and then of course the Cornish, so Cornish miners were working in California and they would refuse to enter any mine until the mining company assured them that the Tommy knockers were on duty. Like they would have to be told, Hey, the Tommy knockers are here. You're good. Go in. And then they would go in like, so was the mine owner just like BSing and saying, Hey, yeah, the Tommy knockers are here. Or was there in the past, was there more of a, I guess, awareness of these things that were they showing themselves more back then? I don't know. 
Oh, you know, I, I honestly, I, like I have a theory about all this um, based on RV and stuff. So I honestly believe that as we've progressed through time and got more materialistic and decided to close down the blinders around our eyes and senses, we lost, begin to lose the ability to perceive these things. Whereas in the past, let's just, I don't know how long ago, I think that it was, people were more open and could perceive more. So I, I, you know, this is stuff that we've seen with remote viewing is it's, it's very, it's like, it's like a mass consciousness of the human race deciding to close its eyes to these things where we get to the like 1400s, 1500s, at least, you know, there were monster hunters, right? Because there was this interaction there's these interactions with this other world where these beings straddle and can come in and out. And now people, when they bring up cryptids, that's part of that past. That's part of that world. They're still doing it. They're still doing what they do. It's just that when someone sees it now, they're enthralled. They're like, what's this? Where deep history of earth here has been, oh yeah, let's get the monster hunter out and that, that guy's going to eventually destroy that little village. So we got to chase it down. You know, it's like, it's like Witcher in a sense, you know, the TV show Witcher. Oh yeah. It's like the, the colliding of the spheres or whatever, where, where it brings these other beings into the world. It's, yeah. It's, it's kind of like interesting that. concept too, in the Witcher, because it's like, they call it the conversion or, or, or something, right. Where, where these two spheres, they were calling them spheres, but they were basically like dimensional spaces merge and then they're forever changed which was very similar to what happened in the montauk project if you've watched any of our previous episodes you know this is how elves and man came to be in one place actually according to the lore in the witcher we have stories in our history that are very similar to this like beowulf for instance where beowulf is fighting grendel which by all accounts i assume is a troll a very evil troll that he has to go fight off and and he has to get this troll or Grendel into the sunlight to turn into stone. And and like and if you start and we'll get into this in later in the episode, but like if you look into troll lore, like this is straight up troll lore is, you know, how you how you kill them or how you affect them is get them into direct sunlight, fool them into staying out into direct sunlight and they will turn to stone and it's so strange that all of these mountain ranges up there in the far north in Europe, all of the all of the ranges, they look different and then they're named after troll. They're troll like they have troll in the name. Yeah, it's that whole place name thing. It's like, yep, never go into Devil's Canyon or Devil's Creek or anything like that or Troll Mountain. Troll Mountain. Well, the, the thing about Troll Mountain that's interesting you know that new show uh, Troll on Netflix, which is a which is a fun movie if you have, if you haven't seen it. it, goes a little bit over the troll lore. But then you know what would happen if a troll blasted out of a mine now and just started like you know terrorizing <laughs> humankind? Kind of, you actually feel bad for the thing though. They do a really it's a really interesting movie because you feel bad for the troll. It's just like alone and acting out kind of you know. These are no spoilers here, you guys, but definitely a fun, fun movie to check out if you haven't. And then there was a 2008 or six movie called Troll Hunter, which was just a ball. That was such a fun movie. Um, and it, it helps you understand the, the troll culture um, and how how it's affected or how it's been passed down. And I mean, these things lived in caves, you know, these Tommy knockers and stuff. I think it's a really kind of interesting introduction into the into the whole thing because there's a lot weirder stuff than tommy knockers that we found have you heard john of the cripple creek colorado um mine yes i've heard of that that's that's uh that's that's a big one actually if you're yeah stuff. so you know i'm not sure is this a I'm not sure if this is a verifiable story for everyone at home. Like, I think it's hard to verify some of these stories. A couple of things that happened related to the Cripple Creek, Colorado mine is there was a guy named Hank Bull. He heard a boy that was lost in one of the mining tunnels. He went to look and the tunnel collapsed in on him. 
Right. And then and then there was another story where, you know, in these tunnels, they have these shafts and they will put a bunch of the ore in these buckets and then they'll pull the ore in these shafts. And one of the buckets or the ropes broke while one of the buckets was being pulled up and it came crashing down on a dude's face and totally just like killed him. Right. So there's like a lot of these kinds of stories. And then the, the miners are like, this place is cursed. Let's get out of here. You know what I mean? That particular one. Um, okay. It's, it's, this is like, we get these themes happening when we look at some of this stuff. And when you get to the Cripple Creek mine, it's very similar to what's happening in the Superstition Mountains, like the Lost Dutchman mine. Right. And I think I spoke about this in an earlier episode. I can't really remember. Yeah, I think I did. We were remote viewing the Lost Dutchman mine, uh, a whole team of us, and we were being harassed by, well, I'll just call it a Tommy knocker. You know, it was what I was describing earlier. It's like got a big nose. It's trickster like it's hairy. So when we remote view the Cripple Creek mine and the incidents that happened there, same genre of being that inhabits that mind. It's not, see, th these beings can interact with your subconscious and your conscious self, right? Because they're, they're like a, you would think of them as like a lower astral density being. They have the capability to move back and forth between 3D and 4D. And they're most interested in protecting what they think is theirs for whatever reason, right? They're kind of like these earth spirits in a sense, um, not a hundred percent. They're like more existing on the paraphysical type earth plane. And so when you have humans that are going into these places where the ownership, it's like they've already staked their claim on it. They're, they're, they're taking it energetically. They want it to be where it is energetically for whatever they're using it for. And that's how it is with the Cripple Creek mine. That's why they got driven out because you have a Tommy knocker there not unlike what we ha were harassed with on the superstition uh, mining thing, same genre of being. And so this is the type of being that will drive people out of them. More often than not, that is what we see. Same one. They're like this community. They're like a society that are, in a sense, in the, in, I guess you can call it the fey realm is another mm. word to use for it right you know a lot of these beings they they come from what people call the fey realm right it's, it's another dimension and they have the ability to slip in and out so that's what that's what happens in a lot of these minds and i think that for the most part you're going to be lucky if you don't run into one of them right yeah like that, that probably would be even weirder than if you did actually when it comes to one of these minds from what i've seen Right, right. And uh, for those of you at home who don't know, fae is sort of short for fairy, like the fairy. It, it, a lot of people, when they think of fairies, they're like, oh, Tinkerbell or something. But that's not what fae means. Fae refers to a whole broad category of beings that are in this dimensional space that, that John is kind of referring to. And we're talking about folklore here. Uh, but it seems like this stuff is bleeding over into our dimension in some cases, and that this is why these miners have these superstitions that they have. Oh, they are always here. They are always around. It's just a matter of us being able to open our eyes to it. You can go in your backyard, and if you have eyes open, you will see them. You're, you're so like you're, you're saying that these things don't just exist in mines. We're talking about in nature all over. In nature, all over. I mean, why do you think, you know, a lot of uh, in, in Great Britain, in Norway, Finland, why they will have huge discussions about how and where they're going to build a road where, no, you can't build it there because fairies live there or, a, or a gnomes live there or a troll lives there, right? This is all part of the same sort of construct of beings from a particular realm that the Tommy knocker would be part of, especially in the uh, smaller villages far away from cities in, in those countries that have remembrance of ancient history are still going to hold to it, right? Because that's what they grew up with and that's what they see and that's what they notice. Oh, did you quickly see that little thing in the corner of your eye run across the field? Well, yeah, it was, it was a gnome, right? 
I mean, they hide behind bushes. They're very shy. They're, they're, uh, not wanting to be completely known, especially now in this day and age. Well, and why would they? A human being's yeah. reaction to seeing one of those things is going to be like, shoot them. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Did you know that in um, Skamania County in Washington State, for instance, there is a law that you cannot shoot a Bigfoot or hunt a Bigfoot? Right. Yeah. They have a law. <laughs> if you all think that's weird, it's not because I think in – Norway or Finland or something, there was a law up there. It could have been one of the Nordic countries. The, you were not allowed to fraternize or speak with trolls through like the 14th century. <laughs> because God, I don't know. So it, <laughs> no, it seems it seems awkward, but then if these things were being seen more often back then and they had a like like a a wildly different culture let's say like some of these trolls or some of these beings were known to eat humans they maybe they were giants maybe they weren't trolls but they were eating humans and then if you were to fraternize with these things it might actually affect more people in the area right but it's also strange because it's like you're not allowed to talk to them so maybe there was more normal relationships between these beings and humans at the time. And this law was made because it was like they were trying to keep the peace. You know, Christianity is being spread. People are trying to get away from almost the old ways, but these the the lore is still strong in the country. Right. I mean, yeah, it's like, why leave food out for these Tommyknockers? You know, people, in a way, people had, even in the 1950s, they had more respect for these things than they do now, where they just think they're ridiculous. Well, you know, all that's going to come back when, 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 when we fight Sauron. Everybody's going to come together from Middle Earth. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which also probably happened at some point. Probably did. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And uh, since we're revolving most of the conversation in this episode around minds, John, <laughs> how did you even want to introduce this subject? Because this has to be the most bizarre mine I have ever heard of. Yeah, exactly. This uh, board camp crystal mine in uh, Arkansas. Um, I, a while ago, had met someone associated with, I can't remember if it was the owner's son or somebody who, who was working there. And they came forward with these stories about um, orbs, and light forms, flashes of light that happen on a regular basis, as well as levitating rocks. Levitating rocks. Levitating rocks at this place, this mine. And actually, you know, people can go to this mine and they can collect crystals. So it's open to the public. You could also have paranormal tools. Now you can see in that video that that rock is kind of moving up and down. And a lot of people will just say, well, that's just, you know, they just put a little apparatus behind it. They're making it move up and down. When I was talking to person associated, I mean, they were, they were very sincere about what was going on there and, and flabbergasted as to why this stuff was happening. And they were out in the world outside of their mind trying to figure out what's going on here you know they were truly curious and not understanding what was happening because i mean who does understand this stuff what is going on there if anything and what potentially causes any type of phenomena that occurs from the orbs the light forms showing up <clears throat> as well specifically as the levitation and this is going to sound really really stupid really stupid but we've seen this before okay so we've seen this before when we look at potential portal locations okay i don't even know how to explain it let me just get it out there okay okay before you do for <laughs> everyone that's watching or listening um at home if you're listening at home Lindsay is pulling up a bunch of different images and videos that have been taken from this mine above ground where you can clearly see rocks appearing like they're levitating. And, and they've done a lot of legwork to try to explain why these videos have not been tampered with and why what you're seeing is accurate on the video, that these are not, it's not CGI, it's nothing like that. And, and they have ways of explaining 
how you can tell that it hasn't been tampered with. And you can see very clearly these rocks levitating from whatever energy in this mine is causing that above ground. Right. And, and um, MUFON, Mutual UFO Network, had even investigated the site and apparently made a report on it. But I don't know if I could not find that report. And then uh, you had Josh Gates from Expedition Unknown TV show go out there and <clears throat> kind of poke around, see what was going on. I don't I don't you know, when you get to these TV shows, not much ever comes of them because they're in and out in a day or two. So they don't get a chance to actually do anything. Right. Like if you and I were going to go down there, we would go down there for like a few weeks and like yeah. do Take the like GoPros to our, you know, GoPro Velcro suit and just like <laughs> stay up all night, every single night. And, and hope and we wake up levitating. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. So, but you said, let me just get this out there. And then I wanted to tell everyone at home what they were looking at or what for, for everyone who was listening. So what, what did you want to get out there? Okay, so this whole thing, we've seen it before. We've seen it with portals in general. Now, oftentimes on this planet, well, there are beings that are sort of the administrator of zones, an area where there is a portal. And these beings exist within another dimension. And their job is to keep the portal in balance, right? So they're and, kind of like in the upside down making sure to keep this portal in balance. Right. And every single time that we remote view one of these things and we, we hit on this type of a being, the viewers, well, they always call it a wizard, which is just weird. Dude, come on. They always call it a wizard. Just like they're seeing something in their mind's eye when they're remote viewing and they have no other way to describe it. So exactly. they'll be like a wizard. It's a wizard. <laughs> so what we have there. This is a huge concentration of granite and uh, quartz crystal, much like you find in, in mines, right? When you get to the Sumter mine and ghost mine, you've got granite and you've got crystal, quartz crystal, and you've got gold. So where you have quartz crystal, you will have paranormal activity, a lot of it if you've got a lot of crystal. What we have here is because there's so much quartz in the earth, in the ground, likely gold as well, there is a huge concentration of energies, huge. It is flowing under the surface. Like you have these like banded layers flowing under the surface that is creating outlets and entries for all different types of beings. Now, one thing that happens, okay, so when you get to this I just I don't know what to call it other than a wizard because that's what the dad is calling it. It <laughs> sounds like <"Ugh." laughs> it sounds just, crazy, but let's whatever. Let's play it is. some D D after this, you know. <laughs> so so this this thing, this wizard, will manipulate the energy. And the data was describing as the now. Remember, the remote viewers are blind, right? They they don't know what they're looking at. They are not told what they're looking at. They just go through their trained trained methodology, right? And they output data. Okay, so what is described is that this wizard will, when the wizard wants to make one of the portals active, one of the portals in that area active, it moves the energy so much that it, some of the data was saying specifically, if it will knock over chairs, it will raise objects, and they'll come back down. And it will look like a paranormal phenomena, a ghost is moving something or a poltergeist is moving something, but it literally has to do with this being administering and, and manipulating specific areas of the portal for specific things to come in and out of. So when you have the levitation occurring is when you are going to get more phenomena occurring that would be orbs, light forms, um, whatever happening in the sky or things floating through the forest. So that's what this, this place is all about. You have this, it's literally like the administrator of this place that is, that is doing this stuff in order to create the phenomena. So it would be two different things. The levitation is the, is the energy knocking and moving the objects to open it up to allow something else to come through. So if you're like, it's like the elevator doorman, right? All right, this uh, this little orb guy wants to come through. He's from this other realm. 
And so I'm going to like press the button and it's going to um, open up this particular portal that it's going to go through, right? And that's when you'll see the levitation. That's when you'll see things moving. And then maybe later on that night, you're going to see the orb floating around or something like that. That's fascinating. So it just from what we've been discussing in this episode, it almost appears like there are, for lack of a better way to say it, different beings that kind of exist and administrate over different parts of the earth that we're not even aware of that are always there all the time. Exactly. We get hints about them in different ways. But then if we're if we're using remote viewing to track this stuff down, we're seeing that there is a physical being that's actually sort of operating the energy. There is. Area. There is. And it's really funny. It's like we have a so on this earth, we have a network, a grid network of portals and they all have to be balanced with each other. So, you know, I've had around me negative portals and I've brought it up to other people and people have said, oh, well, I'm going to go. I can close that portal for you, which is absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense, because you can't close one of these portals. For one thing, you have an administrator of it who is dimensional and will, if you remote view this and say, hey, I'm going to help you with the portal, the guy will basically say, no, 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 <laughs> no, just go away. You know, just let me do my work, right? We've run into this before. And so when you have humans out there who are like, I'm going to close that portal because it's a bad portal, these things have to be balanced, like their networks, right? If, if, if one portal gets closed up by one of these guys, another one is going to have to open up somewhere else because it's all balancing. And just a human doesn't understand this, right? A human will feel the negative effects of a portal if it's a negative type portal, but it kind of has to be there. It kind of has to be in existence. If, if a human could close it down inadvertently, it will have to show up somewhere else for the sake of all of this balance. Well, and I wonder if all of this stuff that human beings are doing on the earth is interfering with some of this stuff. Absolutely. Like these, you know, we've got we've got direct energy weapons, call it whatever you want, harp, the ice cube um, detector down in Antarctica that Eric Hecker talked about recently. You know, they're pumping large voltage into the ionosphere and we're creating all kinds of new electricity in places that weren't there before. So we're using power from the earth or, or even nuclear fission to create all of this power. And it must throw some of this stuff off and put it into chaos. You don't even have to get that sophisticated with it because we were looking at this one particular location where there was a ton of activity and part of, and, and it broke, it basically broke. This portal broke and it was like not, doing the things it should be doing. It was opening and closing too fast and beings were getting trapped on the outside. And so you had a lot of paraphysical phenomena. You had a lot of people talking about curses and stuff like that. It's because these beings, what happened is that they built homes on it and all of the psychic energy from humans and the homes and the new, this Wi-Fi, like this broke it. And so when we viewed this, we had one of those guys, one of them wizard guys that was frantically trying to fix the thing. It was like an elevator that would get stuck in between floors, right? And he was frantically trying to fix it because the beings who were needing it, it was like a birthing portal. It was like a transition portal that beings would be attracted to to go to another world. It wasn't just humans. And they were getting stuck, on the outside because that elevator will get stuck in between floors or not even make it to their floor in a sense. I mean, using this as an analogy. And so, so this being was like constantly trying to fix this thing because the humans had plopped themselves right down on top of it. Well, and it's, it's exactly like what we were talking about earlier in the episode when there's a specific area and they're like, don't build over here. The gnomes right. live there or whoever. This is like, why you don't build a road over a gnome home. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we'll end this episode. Yeah. And in the next episode, we'll actually be going into a lot more of these drilling sites, really weird accounts from different tribes and different people of beings that are living underground that none of us are aware of, but that we probably should be aware of. And it's, going to take you guys for a loop. We're also going to be talking more about trolls in the next episode because there was a deep dive done on those. Don't go anywhere. You guys are going to love it.
And uh, yeah, thanks for being with us, John. Hope you guys at home thought this episode was as out of this world as we did. <laughs>